just been so extraordinarily successful in both answering fundamental questions of astronomy and also providing glimpses into the universe which pose new questions that we didn't even know to ask because we didn't have that insight. And that's what's cool about this movie is that it can bring the experience to lots of people in a format that's pretty unique. Because what we see is just so awesome it's, and it's hard to share. The eight minutes of film that we shot from the payload bay is just fantastic. Uh, when I watched the IMAX sequence, it absolutely transported me back to, to the day. And we had the seven crew members who were you know, reaching out to touch things because they, they were coming out and uh, reaching out to the audience. A lot of people probably have no conception of how large Hubble is. And seeing the little astronauts floating around, it's going to give them a perspective just how big this thing is. I'm told from some of the astronauts that they feel the drama of it more in this film than when they're actually working. So while it, it might seem like we're rock stars, we're really, you know, we're here just to share the experience with as many people as we can so that people can understand that they're a part of it as well and that they share in this success with us. And lift off of Space Shuttle the Planet. I wanted to make a film that utilized the Hubble data, that brought those wonderful images in IMAX 3D to the, to the public. So everything is really based upon the Hubble data. However, there are things that where we have to add some artistry to it. What we're trying to do is not stray too far from the reality. Astronomical timescales are immensely longer than human timescales. Every once in a while, something pretty exciting happens. We've been able to image galaxies that are only 600 million years old. Now, in a human lifetime of, say, 80 years, that's equivalent to you know, looking at pictures, maybe not baby pictures, but of a toddler. The stuff that we're made out of, the regular atoms and uh, gas and, and molecules uh, that make up matter, account for less than 4% of the known energy in the universe. And a lot of that is due to discoveries by Hubble and all of these astronomical discoveries seem to indicate you know, that we're less significant than we ever thought. One uh, sequence which our team devoted a lot of time to is a uh, fly through of the Orion Nebula. There's a good correlation between uh, the Orion Nebula and the Grand Canyon. It's, and it's got these cavities that have been cut out, these very hot stars, and they've been blowing away all this gas, and it's built this beautiful canyon. So we're trying to be as true as possible to the science, but also give the audience a, um, a story and a place and a, um, a visual. My goodness, how breathtaking, and they're sort of profound. Uh, well, it's a little intimidating to be on the cutting edge of 3D technology. Most of the objects we're looking at are extraordinarily far away. There's no way you can get true stereo. So we could not launch two, two Hubbles far enough apart to get real stereo views of the sky. and I actually built the Saturn uh, back into three dimensions. And so we did a stereoscopic, it's just a very really slight move, but it's actually gonna come out over the audience. So with a lot of work, we found a spot looking up at the telescope uh, to mount the camera. And it wasn't just the same old IMAX camera, it's a brand new 3D IMAX. Well, the IMAX folks have converted our helmet cameras, and those are just little teeny they're webcams, basically, and they've converted the webcams to IMAX 3Ds. You know, getting an IMAX camera on Mars or on Venus would be something that would be really exciting, I would think. 
you know, finding out what's out there, what, what is around our universe is important to everybody. You know, everyone has that in common. Most people kind of look up at the sky and say, wow, what is out there? What are we doing on this planet and how do we fit into the grand scheme of things? But humanity's accomplishment of conceiving of a telescope in space and then building it, putting it there and figuring out how to repair it over a period of 20 years. So it's giving us tantalizing views of what we'll be able to see with the next telescope, uh, which is the James Webb Telescope. We've got to have the best drama, right? This is as uh, dangerous what they're doing as dismantling bombs in the Hurt Locker. And our special effects, I'm sorry Jim Cameron, and our budget, <laughs> we win. <laughs>